is the Darcel 15 Tavern in Old Town, Portland. This is Darcel 15 herself, and this is Walter Cole, the man behind them both. Walter is more than the proprietor of Portland's Soul Club featuring female impersonators. He, or rather his alter ego, Darcel, stars as mistress of ceremonies in the flashy, body stage productions the tavern has become famous for. It's been 10 years since Walter first began the act with a few friends, and over those years, the show has grown with the audiences that now pack the club Wednesday through Saturday nights. We worked together on tabletops in the corner, in the far corner of the room, and we had a slide projector for a uh, spotlight, and we did all of our own taping and we ran our tapes and ran out turned the lights on and ran out on this on the tabletops and it was more like for family or for friends uh it was like a house party then you know We'd, and beer was 25 cents a glass and and um, uh, we had good times and the audience was involved with it and we still have the good times and the audiences are still involved but of course we're on a bigger more professional scale now for those who would turn away from a female impersonation show with a shake of the head and a comment about propriety, it must be mentioned that cross-sexual performing has a long and well-respected history in the theaters of the world. What we're doing, Mark, is probably the oldest art form uh, in theater because, of course, Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare all were, was all played by men. Um, Kabuki theater still is all men. and. Uh, Peter Pan is still played by a woman. Right here in Portland, not 70 years ago, female impersonators were big hits in traveling vaudeville shows, as singers, dancers, and especially as comics. The comics have continued to be crowd pleasers for Uncle Milty in the 50s, for Flip Wilson when he pranced around as Geraldine, and for Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis in the Can classic the comedy, Some Like It Hot. And I'm Daphne. Uh, this is uh, uh, Joe Zabine. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Sugar Cane. Hi. Sugar Cane? Yeah, I changed. I used to be Sugar Kowalczyk. You Polish? Yes. I come from this musical family. My mother is a piano teacher, and my father was a conductor. Where did he conduct? On the Baltimore and Ohio. Oh. I play the ukulele, and I sing, too. Sings, too? <laughs> well, I don't have much of a voice, but then this isn't much of a band, either. I'm only with him because I'm running away. Running away from what? Oh, don't get me started on that. Hey, you want some? Bergen. I'll take a rain check. <laughs> In general, audiences have had no trouble accepting and enjoying the performances of well-known comics in drag. It takes another kind of talent to play it straight in women's clothing, as John Davidson did in an episode of The Streets of San Francisco a few years ago. If I invite a boy some night to dine on my fine fin and hattie, I just adore his asking for more, but my heart belongs to daddy. Well, my heart belongs to daddy. Men who build careers around this kind of performance have talent, fine voices, and are good dancers as well. And sometimes their success at portraying women is uncanny. Darcel's show has a good mix of those who play women for laughs and those who are more convincing. But all of the men who report to Darcel's to perform four nights a week share one characteristic. Once the makeup starts to go on, they are transformed into entirely different personalities. Take Darcel herself. The name was borrowed from the stage actress Denise Darcel, and the 15 is a reference to Darcel's reign as the 15th empress of Portland's gay community some years back. So Darcel grew with the place. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, is Darcel another person? I often refer to Darcel as another person. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think when, when, when the costumes and the jewelry and the, and the feathers and everything hit Darcel, I think Darcel becomes another person. She, she's, more, she's more outgoing. Uh, she's loud. She's, she's soft. She's um, all of these, these things all mixed up into one character. Who is your audience? Just about everybody in the, <laughs> every walk of life, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, everything. Has that changed? Did you used to have a different crowd? Was it, sure. Did it used to be primarily a gay club, whereas sure. now it's becoming yes. more straight? Sure. It's becoming more people now, more people-oriented. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... Yes, I don't like the label that it now is more straight or now more gay or mm -hmm. all of that. Yes, when we first started, it was primarily uh, gay. A girls' bar, really. Gay women. 
and um, now it's just a, a people's bar and it's open to everybody on any given night there could be you know bankers and lawyers and and um, uh, you know, Ohio you know as in middle middle America coming to visit Portland they all bring their friends in are some people a little apprehensive the first time they come in oh sure I'm sure um, that's uh, they probably all are, you know. Some show it more than others. Um, but 15 or 20 minutes into the show, or maybe sometimes not even that long, they feel at ease and relax and have a good time. Mm -hmm. What about gays that come up, that come into the club? I know that some gays resent the drag tradition. Sure. And, and they don't think it's very representative of the gay population as a whole. And, uh, and yes, they do uh, resent. There are some that resent that, mm -hmm. but uh, we're not. We don't present it as a gay show. It's a, it's entertainment. We're not propagating anything gay on stage. We're not. We don't throw gay at our audience at all. But you are men impersonating women. Yeah, but but does that have to be? You know, we're not doing. Get drunk, do you do it for art's sake, or do you do it because, uh, not you personally, but as a group? Is this a group of men who want to be women? No. Or no. who are competing with women? No. Or. No, 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 to all that. <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> to all the above. No, we don't compete at all with women. There's not a woman in the world that looks like Darcel, I'm sure, you know, that would dress like Darcel, would walk around on stage like Darcel, would do any of these things that Darcel does. Uh, Darcel is, is, is uh, having a good time. Uh, Darcel is not competing with women. Uh, most, in fact, some of my best fans are women and they just love it. I think they I think they fantasize on maybe one day they could dress like that and go somewhere. You know, like I have a lot of time women will say, uh, I sure wish I could wear earrings down to here. I said, well, wear them somewhere sometime. You know, Halloween's coming. It's not easy work. It's, it's very exacting. You have to be ready when that curtain goes up on Wednesday, regardless of how you feel, you know. And uh, the show is very demanding. So it's not a play thing. They really have to want to be a performer and want to be a female impersonator because because it takes a long time to get ready. You have to have much m many more costumes on your own than you would in as being a guy. You know, you, you know, if you walked in, you wouldn't have to put as much makeup on and the whole whole thing. So. And yet Walter Cole has put 10 years of his life into this unusual and difficult line of work. He says he does it because of the magic of show business. I still stand behind that curtain and uh, the butterflies and the why am I here and, and how come I'm going to put myself through this one more time. And yet when, when you go through the curtain and you hit the stage and the audience and the reaction and the, the, ma the magic that mixes together, it's showbiz and that's where my life is. And that's why you do this? And that's why I do it. The show has flash and feathers, spectacle, and moments of sensitivity. And through it all, there is one and only one who pulls it together, one star, Darcel. You play a lot with the audience, don't you? A lot with the audience. My whole act is the audience, with the audience. They have to be with me or I, I don't work too well. She doesn't shy away from social statements or parody either. What are, the, what are some of the things that you've poked fun at in the past? Myself, probably. I think, of course, I think that's, that's the only way to go. You know, you can't poke fun at anything else unless you can poke fun at yourself. Myself, uh, 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 singers, moves that we mime, uh, uh, situations that we've seen done 
you know, other places. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. So we take bits and pieces and put them all together. Political and make fun. figures, famous names, things like that. Uh, famous names, sure, political figures, sure. I do a little Anita Bryant trip during the monologue that, uh, that uh, puts it about where it is. Anita was going to get all dressed to go to one of her famous rallies last Saturday night. She couldn't go. She could find nobody to comb her hair. And she went anyway, marched right in that stadium, singing yours and mine, favorite hymn. Onward, white, heterosexual, Christian soldier. It would not be an exaggeration to say Darcel, the wise-cracking, funny, mean, sometimes vulnerable hostess, has the audience in the palm of her hand night after night after night. But she's very well supported by a cast of six who sing and dance with style. With camp. With stunts. Finally, with sentiment. You get people who come back and come back. Yeah, uh, you know the really the really nice compliment to all of us in the show is when uh, people bring their friends from out of town or their mothers, or, you know, so bring their mothers in. Oh, mothers. Oh, we have lots of mothers. Mothers love us. <laughs> mothers love us. What do you think the attraction is for mothers? Well, they maybe, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably because we make over them. Maybe we have a good time with them. Um, uh, it's, it's fun for us to, uh, to see them smile. And... Well, maybe. The Darcel 15 Tavern really is a tavern with a difference, but one of the biggest differences is it's a lot more entertaining than most of the other taverns in Portland. It puts on a darn good show four nights a week, Wednesday through Saturday. There's one show at 9.30 and another at 11.30. We guarantee you'll like it unless you're extremely conservative. And the show has everything. Spectacle, bright lights, good music and quite a bit of humor, and audience involvement as well. In fact, the only thing Darcel doesn't have in his show is women dressed as men. We asked him if he'd ever considered adding that element to his show, and he said he considered it but discarded it because they found that women dressed as men were just too boring. <laughs> boring. What a drag.